Can you sit up the thumbs and up the hearts? Bless the Lord, ye heavenly host. Hallelujah. Come on, send them up. Bless the Lord, all ye his angels. Come on, send them up. Send up. Oh, invite somebody in. Come on, send up the thumbs and up the hearts. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, invite somebody in, please. Do me one huge favor. Just tell Pastor T. You good evening. Come on. Just tell Pastor T. Good evening, y'all.
I said, are you ready to go there? Just type in Pastor T. I'm ready to go there tonight, y'all. Two more minutes, two more minutes. We gotta take some things out in the atmosphere. Come on, all hey. over the nation. Yeah, yeah. Will you arm yourself with praise? As Come on, keep tonight. tagging your people in, y'all. I need y'all tonight. For you. Come on. Next one is for the nation. Someone lift it up. Come on, hey. Keep we tagging them. We got the gates that out, y'all. We got the gates that out. Come on, come on, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with your posse. Come on, we're going to create a sound tonight, y'all. Invite everybody you know, y'all. I promise you, we going there tonight for real. Shout if you want the presence. Come on. Yeah. Come on, shout if you want to tell David to bring the ark back. Shout if you want David to bring the ark back. Give you a minute and 15 seconds, y'all. But in the meantime, we going. Jump. Somebody spin. Somebody scream. Sense my victory in the room. Come on, just type in I got the victory. Dance, 
this new shirt out. I'm about to sweat these new pants out, this new dress out. Come on! Find you a praise partner. Somebody ain't scared to do it. Somebody Said I got the victory! Just to hear what Pastor T has to say, and for that I say thank you. And for that, I am appreciative. Let me just give you some rules for tonight. Tonight, we're about to dive into this thing called the prophetic real strong. I say to you, buckle up. You're not on this line because you were invited. You're not on this line because you were tagged. You're on this line by divine appointment. And I believe by the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost that your miracle is going to happen tonight. Again, the Bible speaks about in 2 Chronicles chapter number 20, verse number 20. It says, believe the Lord God, his prophets, and you shall prosper. There's something about when God's auricular prophet begin to speak things into the atmosphere, something shifts. And uh, we've been experiencing at Faith War Family Worship Center, we've been experiencing, man, I'm talking about something mind-blowing. seems as if every hour we've been experiencing miracles. I released a prophetic word over my blood sister on Saturday and I told her, I said in three days, God's gonna do something major. I said, God's gonna cancel debt. Not only is God gonna cancel debt, but I hear God saying scholarships are gonna be awarded. Right before I got on to this line, my sister sent me, a, my sister FaceTimed me and said, bro, you're not gonna believe this. She said, I need to stay connected to you. She said, it seems as if ever since I've been connected to you, it seems as if Things been moving, things been breaking. And she began to give me a testimony. And I said, man, it is, isn't God amazing? Isn't God good? And God spoke to me even while I was preparing this tonight. He said, Terrence, tell three people tonight before I dive into the meat of this message. He said, tell three people. He says, tell them the 31st can't get here quick enough. And I said, God, what do you mean? He said, Terrence, tell them that the 31st can't get here quick enough. He said, tell them what I promised them in January, even though they, it seemed as if they said, well, it ain't going to happen. I come to make an announcement. It's going to happen. God's got one more day to do what he said he was going to do on January the 1st. What you call 364 days, God says, I call only one day. The Bible speaks about, he says, what you call a thousand day, God said, it's only one day to him. So I'm telling you all, don't press the panic button. I need about eight people just to type in. I won't press the panic button. Come on. Eight people just type in. I won't press the panic button. You think it's coming from a stimulus check. God says, no, I'm bigger than $600. God says, I'm bigger than that. God says, what if I gave you $6,000? God says, what if I gave you $60,000? It's out of what you believe. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You can't see it, but God said, your faith is going to perform that miracle. And God said, that's what I need. Let me go ahead. I want to dive into this, y'all. Don't log, don't log off. Because if you log off, it could be the chance that your miracle's about to break. Those that truly know me knows that I'm not one of those pastors who will look at what other leaders are doing and start mimicking what they're saying. Again, there's nothing wrong with seeking the counsel of wise men and old women. But when God has instructed or summoned you in his office, then you must go. So about two months, two months ago, I asked God, what is he saying concerning 2021? Again, for those of you all that follow me, and even those that are part of my ministry, in late August of last year, I spoke about what was going to transpire in 2020, and it came to pass. I'm not one of those one of those men of God or one of those uh, auricular prophets or oracles of God that speaks after everyone is saying, whenever God speaks to me, I'm speaking 
And I don't, I don't care where the chip, whatever the chips, where the chips may fall, that's where we go. And so I'm fully persuaded, according to Amos chapter number three, verse number seven, it says, surely the Lord God would do nothing but revealing his secrets unto his servants, the prophet. So in other words, when God's prophets are in his face, seeking him concerning his people and even what's to come, I believe God will begin to show them what's to come. I'm under this persuasion that God would not allow his people to be caught off guard. God even spoke to me about the second strain of this COVID back in August of this year, and it came to pass. I'm telling y'all, God spoke to me. My church, those of those that are part of Faith World Family Worship Center, y'all know I spoke about this, I believe in July, August, and it came to pass just, just the end of the latter part of this month. And so I'm asking God, I said, God, what are you saying for 2021? And remember, and remember, I asked them this year. So I didn't want to mimic someone else or wait to hear what someone else is saying to say that that's what they said. I really sought the face of God concerning 2021. And this is what God told me what's going to happen for 2021. You can mark this down. He said 2021 will be the year of being found in the right position. I'm going to say that again. He said 2021 will be the year to be found in the right position. I need someone to please type that in. So in other words, if you're going to get what you're praying for, you have to be already found in the right place to receive the right miracle. <laughs> Let me say that one more time. If you're going to get what you're praying for, you have to make sure that you're already found in the right place to receive the right blessing. I believe that 2020 was the year of maturity. It was the year of testing our faith. It was the year of re-evaluating our lives. It was also the year of ridding ourselves of things and people that don't belong. Some of us got the memo and others ignored it. And those that did, I'm hearing, and this is what I want to tell about seven of you all, 17 of you all. 2020 will be the year that God will begin to reward those that have been faithful. So I'm asking God concerning 2021. And he said, Terrence, not only shall 2021 be the year of being found in the right position, but 2021 will be the year I will cause things to happen. I need about eight people to please just type this one word. He said, I will cause things to happen in what I call in a sudden manner. Come on, just type that one word, sudden. Come on, as you type it, I got to keep going, y'all, because I got so much to go. I need to get this word out today. So this shall be the year in 2021 which I will cause those that have been faithful, those that have been consistent, I will cause them to shine in this season, says God. And I know many of y'all have been hearing me say often, but I need you to allow this to register into your spirit. Says God, I am a God, hear this now, God says, I am a God of consistency, and I will, I will reward those that diligently seek me. What does the word diligently mean? Come on, I need someone to please be my personal moderator. We're about to go there tonight, y'all. The Webster describes the word diligent as this. I need someone to type this definition. Webster described the word diligent as having or showing care and consciousness in one's work or duties. Let me give you the definition of diligent. Diligent is having or showing care of consciousness in one's work or duties duties. Then he dropped Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 6 in my spirit. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 6, and this is what it says. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. <laughs> must believe that God that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. That's Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 6. Then God said, Terrence, I want you to pay close attention to the verse again. So at first it didn't register. I was having a blind moment, y'all. At first it didn't register, and then finally it started clicking. He said, in this passage of scripture, three words should stand out, and that is, I need y'all to write these three words that need to stand out tonight. The three words are, Faith, rewarder, and diligently. Let me give you the three words again. The three words are faith, rewarder, and diligently. 
So this is what God said now that I have an aha moment. I have an epiphany. He said, Terrence, diligent seekers gets rewarded. Diligent seekers gets the prize. Diligent seekers understand that in order to get what you believe in God for, you can't waver in your faith regardless of how it looks in the natural. Diligent seekers understand that God isn't moved by our complaints. God isn't moved by our memory. He's moved by our consistent faith. I need about eight people, please, just to type in. I need y'all to hurry up and do this, y'all. We ain't got all day. I need eight people just to type in, God, make me a consistent, diligent seeker. Come on, eight people, please, just type in, God, make me a consistent, diligent seeker. I'm going to give you 13 seconds to type that in, y'all. Hurry up, y'all. We ain't got all day. I keep telling y'all. Come on, eight people, just type in, God, make me a consistent, diligent seeker. Come on, come on, come on. So when I start studying, look at this now. When I start studying, God literally overwhelmed me with what is about to take place for the diligent seekers. Says the Spirit of the living God, for many of my people, you felt like 2020 was the worst year of your life. Said the Spirit of the living God, many of y'all have even gotten an attitude with me, says God. He said, but I am God, which is I'm sovereign, which means I don't owe you anything. And he says, I'm governed by my own set of rules. But for those of you all that understand who I am, says God, he says that I am a God that will make sure that my people are about to experience their best life. Said the spirit of the living God, for many of y'all, this shall be the season, which is called, I need about seven people, please, y'all type in this thing, and you don't even realize that as you type it, you're prophesying to your destiny. I need about seven people just to type in, this shall be the year of the big payback. Come on, come on, seven people, please just type in, 2021 shall be the year of the big payback. Come on, let me give you eight seconds to type that in, y'all hurry up, y'all hurry up, hurry up. God, I feel your presence. I feel your presence, God. I feel your presence. So in other words, let me just elaborate on what that means. So in other words, things that you lost, he said, don't pray for it back. Let me say that again. Things that you lost, he said, don't trip over spilled milk. Don't cry over spilled milk, says God. He said, just know, come on, I need y'all to hear what I'm getting ready to convey. This chair is holding me hostage. He said, just know that the things that you lost, he said, you lost it for a reason. He said, either it wasn't ready for you or it couldn't handle where you was getting ready to go. He says, he says, what am I about to do for the things that you lost, especially those things that were not ordained to go with you? He says, I'm about to replace that which wasn't good for you. Just know that I'm about to bring you to a place called, I need about eight people to hear what I'm getting ready to convey. He said, I'm about to bring eight people to this place called Triple Four Happiness. <laughs> he said, I'm about to bring you to a place called Triple Four Happiness. Said the Spirit of the Living God, I'm about to bring you to a place called Triple Four Financial Stability. And in this season that many of y'all just came out of, that you've been saying that 2020 has been the worst year. I know you may have lost some loved ones. I know you may have had COVID. I know you may have had some things that you said, man, where is God? But let me tell you what God told me to tell you concerning 20, what, what 2020 really was doing. He said, really, 2020 was the year of molding. Look what he says. Look what he says. And then he dropped Psalms 91. Verse number seven in my spirit. Psalms 91, verse number seven. This is what God dropped in my spirit for those of you all that feel like, man, God wasn't fair. He said, tell 20 people. He said, tell them a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right side. But look what God, he didn't leave us on the cliffhanger. No, no, no. God didn't leave us on the cliffhanger. No, he didn't. He says, but it shall not come near you. And so in other words, God says, he said, tell about eight people that had the COVID. He says, yes, I know many people died. He said, and some of you all had it. Hey, I feel God all around here, right around here. He says, if the enemy had his way, you would have lost your life. But God says, 
said, just a myth. He can't be killed in my chain. That thing is personal right here. He said, well, just a mere fact that you're watching me right now is a clear indication that you got some major work to do in the kingdom for 2021. So in other words, the days and the weeks and the years that you lost in times past, I hear God saying, I'm about to make those years up, says God. He said, the only thing I want you to do is just always been a place called humility. Always been a place called self-reflection. So whenever you feel like you're getting cocky, God said, remember, you could have went out of here in November. Remember, you could have went out of here in, in October. But God said, just the mere fact that you have you have a, a, a flashback moment it keeps you in a place called humility so yes says God look at this now many have received the worst season I know you said 2021 was the worst season of your life but I say to you says God because you didn't quit when you had every reason to do so he said I'm about to finish what I started yes many that's around you will suffer but because you endured the hardest season of your life, you're about to see the reward of the Lord. Says the Spirit of the living God, this shall be called your reward season. <laughs> Ooh, did y'all hear what I just said? He said, this shall be called your reward season. Come on. I need about eight people. Please just operate in obedience real quick. We ain't got all day. Just type in, I'm in my reward season. Come on. Eight people, please just type in, I'm in my reward season. Oh man. Hey, people just typing, I'm in my reward season, y'all. Come on, hey, people just typing, I'm in my reward season. Oh, my God, no Sandy Kita Tabanche. Oh, God, I feel your presence. God, I feel your presence. God, I feel the rock of you. I feel the breath of God. I feel the number of God all on this live right now. There have been some people that's been doubting. There have been some people that felt like they wanted to throw in the towel. But God says you got one more day. And if you can cross over to the new year, that's a clear indication that you got something big coming. That's a clear indication that God said, I haven't seen. Hello? I just heard Jesus just tap me on the shoulder. I haven't seen. Ear haven't heard. Neither have it into the hearts of the things that God has already prepared for this that people that believe in him so look what God says he says he says this he says he says this is your reward season as a matter of fact I hear God saying this shall be called look at this now eight people I need y'all to hear what I'm getting ready to convey he says as a matter of fact this shall be called your undeniable reward season he said it's gonna be obvious that I got my hand on you he says it's going to be obvious that I got my hand on you. He said it's going to be obvious I got my hand on you. Even your enemies are getting ready to recognize that my hand is on you. Even those that don't, that's, that's been talking about you behind your back and some of them even talking about, about you in your face. He says, but it's going to be obvious to them that man, what is it about them that I can't touch? What is it about them that I can't break? I know I didn't lie. I know I didn't spread the gossip. I know I didn't made them Facebook status, but it's something about them that keep allowing them to bounce back in the midst of a pandemic. It's something that allows them to keep bouncing back in the midst of an epidemic. And what they don't realize is that, man, you and God, y'all best friends. And God said, because you're my best friend, I ain't going to allow your enemies to laugh at you. Hello, David. So look what God says. As a matter of truth, this is what God says. He says, even your enemies are going to see the glory of the Lord resting upon you. As a matter of truth, I hear God saying, Pastor Ken, I hear God saying, I'm about to cause what my diligent seekers has been going through. I'm getting ready to cause, look what God said, he's getting ready to cause. He said, I'm getting ready to cause that drastic cycle to come to an end. God said, I'm getting ready to cause that drastic cycle to come to an end. And, and y'all know God always give me a scripture because I don't believe in prophesying without a scripture. I don't believe in prophesying without a word. So he dropped Proverbs chapter number 6, verse number 31. Can somebody please just be my personal moderator and just type in Proverbs chapter number 6, verse number 31. Look at what the word of the Lord says. It says, yet when he, who is the he that he's talking to? He's talking about the thief. He says, yet when he, the thief is found, he must. Come on, y'all. Come on. Some of y'all, y'all lost your peace. You lost your joy. You engaged the wrong Negroes some access to you. 
And because you love them, they took advantage of you. They stole your joy. They stole your peace. They stole your happiness. They stole everything that was connected to you. But this is what God dropped in my spirit for about seven of you all. He says, tell seven people, tell them Proverbs chapter number six, verse number 31. He says, yet when he, the thief is found. We're about to find that joke, but God's getting ready to show you who the thief is. God's getting ready. You may even know the thief, but God said you got some secret thieves that you don't even know about. People that are in your face, smiling in your face, but all along trying to stab you in the back, trying to find out your secrets. But he said, yet when he, the thief is found, he must restore. Look at this now. Let me show you how the enemy is about to restore. The Bible says he shall restore sevenfold. He may have to give up all the substance of his house. Can I, can I bring it to 2021, what that really means? Can I tell you what that really means in 2021? That means the enemy that messed around and put his mouth on the wrong person. And because you've been sold out for God, you ain't compromised. Yes, it's been hard to live holy, but you've been doing it. And God says, the enemy got to pay you back sevenfold. And not only has he got to pay you back sevenfold, God says... He about to give the enemy an eviction notice and you get ready to take back everything that he got. Somebody said transfer. All right, all right. Maybe, maybe I'm going too fast. I'm going too fast. Y'all y'all, y'all ain't really with me today. So he got to give all of his substance. He got to make an apology. He got to go live and say, man, I put my mouth on you. Please forgive me. Because guess what? He can't get to where he needs to get to until he apologizes to you. So God says, not only you'll get sevenfold, but he got to give up everything. He stole your peace. God says, I'm getting ready to send Tormor his way. He stole your joy. God says, I'm getting ready to put him in, uh, in misery. He, he made your life hell. God said, don't trip. Don't wish bad on him. Bless him. <laughs> he said, he said don't, don't wish bad on him. Bless him. Bless them. That's what God said. He said, bless your enemies. Because the quicker you bless them, the quicker God can say, I right, now, now I see that your heart is in the right place. Now I can do what I need to do. So this is what God said. He said, says the spirit of the living God. He said, my people are about to experience the greatest release of their life. Says the spirit of the living God. God says, I am releasing a massive spirit. Come on. Eight people, I need y'all to hear what I'm getting ready to convey. He says, I'm releasing in this season and in this hour, I'm releasing a massive spirit of rest, recompense, reestablishment, and restoration. Come on, I need someone please just to type in what I'm what I just said. You about to experience the rest of the Lord. You about to operate in a place of repent, recompense, reestablishment, and restoration. Let me say that again. You're about to experience the greatest rest of your life, recompense, reestablishment, and restoration. So God took me, come on y'all, now let's get into the word y'all. So God took me to a familiar passage of scripture that I've been teaching on for years. But God has been giving me more insight on this lately, this passage of scripture y'all. So last night, we were on a Zoom call with our new members and our leaders and God said something to me that blew my mind he said Terrence coming into full alignment has benefits now I've studied the life of Elijah and Elisha but God showed me something that was real different he said Terrence I want you to go back to the story of Elijah and Elijah so here it is you have Elijah who is the spiritual father and Elijah who is the son which is equivalent to a spiritual father and a son relationship. When we begin to examine the lives of these two great men of God, Elijah the prophet and Elijah his student, we can see how things started to unfold. Now, I've studied this passage of scripture many times, but God had me to go back and restudy this passage of scripture. He said, Terrence, many of my people, they complicated their walk with me. And as a result of this complication, they experience unnecessary warfare. Unnecessary warfares are a byproduct 
of you not submitting under authority. Unnecessary, unnecessary warfares are a byproduct of the spirit of rebellion. Unnecessary warfares are a byproduct of the spirit of frustration. So in other words, when you're not in full alignment, you tend to spend your days in frustration and your years in depression. Let me say that again. When you not operate in a place called full alignment, you tend to spend your days in frustration and your years in depression. And God said something that was so powerful. Come on, y'all. I need y'all to hear what I'm getting ready to say. God said something to me that was so powerful. He said, Terrence, if you follow the life of the disciples, when it finally clicked, they were able to do the exact same thing that Jesus did. When the disciples finally understood that when Jesus told them, if you're going to follow me, you have to give up your own ideology. You have to give up false burdens and you have to trust me even when you can't trace me. And this is the problem that most of us have. Come on, let me bless you with this. And this is the problem that most of us have. And that is, if we're not in control, if we can't see how how what we in can make how we can make it happen, we tend to make it happen. And in most cases, when you try to make it happen, it tend to be carnality involved. But God showed me something that said, Terrence, the spirit of servitude. And serving is one of the keys to unlocking everything that's held up. Come on. Did y'all hear what I just conveyed? He said, Terrence, tell them that the spirit of servitude and serving is one of the keys that will unlock everything that's been held up. Why do you think that the enemy, come on, I'm getting ready to show y'all how this thing works. Why do you think that the enemy and even your flesh give us access to this thing called excuses? And the reason is because... The spirit of excuses is nothing but another form. Let me show you what the spirit of excuse is. The spirit of excuses is nothing but another form of doubt, fear, wavering, and inconsistency. But God spoke to me and said, Terrence, it's time to unlock those hard codes. One act of obedience and submission will unlock those codes. Eight people. I need you to just type this in. Eight people that I'm talking to, just type in God unlock it tonight. Come on. Eight people, please just type in God unlock it tonight. I'm going to give you eight seconds. Come on, y'all hurry up. We ain't got all day, y'all. I told you I got a long way to go tonight. Just type in God unlock it tonight. God, I feel your presence so strong. And this is what you and I don't understand. And that is, when you learn to submit, you automatically cause, let me tell you, let me tell you what the power of submission causes. The power of submission causes a prophetic activation. What is prophetic activation? I'm glad you asked. Prophetic activation is when the process of what you've been going through causes God's prophets to speak to your situation and cause a metamorphic change to take place. Let me give you the definition again because I believe I was talking too fast. Prophetic activation is when the process of what you've been going through causes God's prophets to speak to your situation and cause a metamorphic change to take place. See, prophetic activation not only re releases the servant's gift and the mantle for service, but it imparts to them what is needed for effectiveness. And for this reason alone, this is why the enemy and even your flesh doesn't want you to come into full alignment. And this is what Jesus was, this was the message that Jesus was trying to convey to his disciples. He was trying to tell them jokers to get this understanding. He says, when you all come into full alignment, some of the struggles, some of the fights, some of the unnecessary warfares that you are experiencing, that you're experiencing, look what God says. He says, it's going to come to a drastic halt. As I begin to look at the ministry of Elijah, look at this now. I begin to look at the ministry of Elijah. I couldn't help but notice all of the warfare that he went through. And when you're not when you're not strong spiritually, the spirit of depression sometimes can overwhelm you. But when you when you're spiritual, you understand the warfare and why you have to fight the good fight of faith. 
So God showed me the fight of Elijah through, through with this, this witch called Jezebel and her false prophets that surrounded her. But because Elijah understood the power of submission, come on, I, I need y'all to hear what I'm, some of that's going over some of your head. Elijah understood the power of submission to God and his plan. He understood even though he was numerically outnumbered, but him and God was more than those that were against him. And this is what God is trying to get us to understand. I need y'all to hear what I'm getting ready to convey. Come on in. This is what you and I need to understand. We need to understand this right around here. Regardless of how many ops or oppositions that we're facing, as long as you have Jesus in your corner, you can win any war that's against you. What did the word of God say? If one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. And this is why the enemy, come on y'all, let me bless y'all with this. And this is why the enemy doesn't like unity. Because he knows when the body of Christ come into this one place called unity, there's nothing that we're facing that we can't come out of. So here it is, you have Elijah. And Elijah... Now trot into a place called Gilgal. Come on, y'all. Let's get ready to tap into this prophetic, y'all. Y'all ready? I need someone to please be my personal moderator. Prophetically speaking, Gilgal means the turning point. Come on. I need someone just to type in Gilgal. G-I-L-G-A-L. Prophetically speaking, Gilgal means the turning point. And this is what God is saying to about five of you all. Uh, the rest of you all, you just eavesdropping. But, uh... The rest of you, the five people that I'm talking to, I'm getting ready to show you something. He said, you at this place called Gilgal. You at this place called Gilgal. G-I-L-G-A-L. -L. He says, he says, <laughs> that you are at this place called turning point in your life. And that's why the fight that you are in has intensified. Because even the enemy can sense that you're there. Because you're there, that's why he has increased his weaponry. But for many of you all, but for many of y'all, because you are at this turning point in your life, that's why the enemy has sweetened up his weaponry. Can I tell you, let me show y'all something. Come on, I want to bless y'all. I'm getting ready to show y'all how this joker work. I say he sweetened up his weaponry. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked. That means things that you've been asking for from those that you know doesn't match your destiny, it seems like all of a sudden they get it. It seems like all of a sudden they have an epiphany. It seems like all of a sudden they want to, it seems as if the things that you've been asking for, they're now doing it, right? What does that mean? That means because they can sense that you are at your wit's end. And because you are at your wit's end, they want to seem like they now got it. But what you don't understand, and that is, they don't have it together, but they know what you want and know what you like. So what do they do now? Roshan, God, I feel your presence. So what do they do now? They act like they want to start doing the things that you've been complaining for for years. <laughs> they want to start praying. They want to start going to church. They want to start reading their Bible. And that's because they got wind. That you got strength to walk away and never look back. I need about five people, please, just to type in, I'm at my turning point. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I need about five people, please, just to type in, I'm at my turning point. I'm at Gilgal. I'm at my turning point. Come on, five people, hurry up, y'all. We ain't got all day. Just type in, I'm at my turning point. Come on, y'all, hurry up. You're at your turning point. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Come on, five people, just type in. I'm at my turning point. Come on, you got six more seconds. Come on. I'm at my turning point. And because you're at your turning point, it's at that place is where you're going to start experiencing major turnarounds in every aspect of your life. Places and things that you once were comfortable at, you will no longer be.
So this is what God says, because you're at Gilgal, I want to prophesy to my five people. Because you are at Gilgal, this is what God is saying. He says, I'm removing all of your cushioning. <laughs> God says, I'm causing, even before December the 31st to get here, I'm calling you to a place called higher. God says, before December 31st get here, I'm calling you to a place called deeper. <laughs> Oh, my, my, my. All right. Y'all know what time it is. We at halftime, y'all. We at halftime. We at halftime. I need every one of y'all to do me one favor for 90 seconds. I need every one of y'all to please share this right now. I need every one of y'all to please share this. And after you share it, just type in, I share it. Come on. 90 seconds. Y'all know we at halftime. Come on. Share this right now, and we get ready to go in 90 seconds. Come on. Come on. Hurry up. Come on. Come on. Share it again. I know you may have shared it once, but somebody just logged on your page being nosy. We about to get them something to watch right now. Come on. Share it again. Come on. Come on. Hey. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, share it again, y'all. I need everyone y'all to please share it again. Hurry up, y'all. Hurry up. going on so God said it's gonna be a simultaneous type of thing it's gonna be a dual type of thing as you go higher you're gonna go deeper at the same time it's gonna be dual says God and so here it is you have Elijah who is the son who was the young prophet who is zealous but needed direction and this is the problem that we have in the body of Christ right now and that is many of us we catch on fire when things are going good, but we lose our fire when trials and tribulation hit our life. <laughs> Let me say that again. Many of us in the body of Christ, we catch on fire when things are going good, but we lose our tenacity. We lose our fire when trials and tribulation hit our life. And this is the revelation that many of us haven't gotten yet. And that is, even when things are going bad, we should keep that same energy. Because what that shows God, and that is, God, I will trust you even when I don't understand the season that I'm in. As a matter of fact, David picked it up best. David said, he said, if I ascend up in heaven, thou art with me. He said, if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art with me. What is David really conveying? David is really saying this. He said, because I know God will never leave me, nor will he forsake me, regardless of what state that I'm in, I owe him that same energy. Somebody just type in, I will not change my posture. Come on, come on. I need about eight people. Please just type in, I will not change my posture. Hurry up, y'all. We ain't got all day. Just type in, I will not change my posture. Come on, I feel like prophesying. Y'all stay right there. I feel prophetic ministry creeping up on me right around here. And this is what Elijah, the son, the young prophet, thought he understood everything, but he didn't understand. And that was God strategically placed Elijah in his life to make sure that he gets to his expected end. And this is where most of us have missed the boat. And that is when God blesses us a few times. Come on, I'm getting ready to show y'all how many of y'all, you get satisfied with the crumbs when God says, I'm trying to extend the whole loaf. Many of you get excited about the crumbs, but God says, I'm trying to give you the whole loaf. Look what God says. He says, when God says, I bless you a few times, you tend to revert back to that place called familiarity. But God had strategically placed a pastor or an accountability partner in your life 
who can care less about how great you can prophesy. God has strategically placed a pastor or an accountability partner in your life who can care less about how much time you give. God has strategically placed a pastor or an accountability partner in your life who can care less how talented you are. God has strategically placed a pastor or an accountability partner in your life who can care less how many demons you know by name. God has strategically placed a pastor or accountability partner in your life who can care less how many degrees or letters that you have behind your name. And this is where many of us have missed it. Because we saw God doing a few things, we felt like we didn't need the system of God. And so this is what Elijah the son understood. All there was to know about ministry of the prophet and about receiving Elijah's mantle. He thought he knew how he was going to be promoted into a role of Elijah as the great prophet. Come on, y'all. I need about 10 people just type in, don't abort the process. Come on. 10 people just type in, don't abort the process. Come on. 10 people, hurry up. Just type in, don't abort the process. Come on, 10 people just type in, don't abort the process. So Elijah the son thought he knew how he was going to be promoted into the role of Elijah as the great prophet. Elijah, like many of us, we feel like we have mastered God. We feel like, oh, I know how God going to move. And God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. He said, just when you thought that you mastered me, God said, I'm getting ready to flip this script. I'm getting ready to put a curveball in here to see, will you still worship me? Will you still praise me in spite of what you're going through, in spite of this curveball that was just thrown at you? Will you keep that same energy like you got when you got that extra stimulus check? <laughs> But Elijah, the son, had something to teach his student about obeying God. So they went to Gilgal. Again, prophetically speaking, Gilgal means the turning point. In, in 2 Corinthians, I mean 2 Kings chapter number 2, when you get a chance, read it at your own leisure. I don't have time right now. 2 Kings chapter number 2, verse number 1. Before Elijah supernaturally was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind, he faced many challenges. And through those challenges, Elijah, the son, stuck with him. Let's follow along in, in 2 Kings chapter 2. And before I dive into that, this is what I heard God just saying. He says, can you stick by your leader side when you have every reason to leave, but you don't have a right to leave? <laughs> oh, my, oh, my, my. Can you stick by your leader's side? When you have every reason to leave, but you don't have a right to leave. Said the Spirit of the living God for many of you all. Yes, you have every reason to do what you're doing, but don't you don't have a right to even do it. Yes, everything says you do it, but is it the right thing to do? Said the Spirit of the living God, I've called you to a hard place. In every case, he says, in every case, I've anointed you to shift situations. So when others have walked away, but I've given you the strength, the wisdom, the understanding, and even the knowledge to change the hard situations. And because you endure like a good soldier, he says, tell about eight people, because you endure and you are enduring, he says, your reward is about to come suddenly. Come on, just type that one word, suddenly. Come on, hurry up. Those of you all that, that, that you receive it, just type the one word suddenly. I got to keep going. So look at verse number one. Look what it says. And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went to Elisha from Gilgal. They're the turning place. Look at verse number two. Then Elijah said to Elijah the son, he says, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. Prophetically speaking, Bethel means the place of transformation or the place where God dwells. Let me say that again. Bethel, Bethel, B-E-H-B-E-T-H-E-L, Bethel, prophetically means the place of transformation or the place where God dwells. And this is, remember, he went from one place, which was Gilgal, which was his turning place. Then he's at another place, which is the place of transformation. Look at this now. And this is what the Spirit of the Living God is saying. Well, I'm about to take many of you all. I'm causing a dramatic change. And when you come out this time, 
You're going to be unrecognizable. I says God, I'm even shifting your appetite for the things that your flesh crave for. <laughs> God says, I'm changing your appetite. So, so, so look at Elijah, the son's comment. He says, but Elijah said this, this is what he said. He said, as the Lord, as long as the Lord lives and your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Look at verse number three. Look at verse number three. So the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elijah and said to him, do you know that the Lord would take away your master from you today? And Elijah, the son, replied back and said, yes, I know, but I'm going to be quiet. Let me bless about eight people right here to know that God has his hands on you is to know that people that are around you can see the hand of God on your life. And because they can see the hand of God on your life, many of them are trying to talk you out of the position that they've been craving to get into themselves. Ooh. Let me say that again. Whenever you got people that are around you or in your ear, and they see that God has given you favor with man, favor with your leaders, and they're on the outside looking in, most of the time, many of them are wishing and hoping that they were in that position. And because they're not in that position, many of them will start talking against your leader to you to cause you to now start feeling a certain kind of way about your leaders. But if the roles were ever reversed, I promise you what you're supposed to be doing, they'll show you how it's done. But you would show the anointed self, you can't see it because you're looking at the natural and don't understand that this thing is spiritual. So, so, so look at verse number four. Then Elijah said to him, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. Now, now this is the third time they've gone somewhere. Now, keep in mind, I want to, I want to bless you with this. This is the third place that they've gone and it ain't like they went to around, they went around a corner. They, they traveled days at a time. They went from Gilgal. They went to Bethel. Now they're at Jericho. Prophetically speaking, Jericho means the place of fragrance. Let me say that again. Jericho prophetically means the place of fragrance. And this is what, this is what, this was at Jericho where the school of the prophets had set up camp. But look at Elijah's response. Look at what he said. He says, he said, as long as the Lord lives, and y'all know God ain't dying, Jesus ain't dying, right? And as long as your soul lives, I won't leave you. This is what he's telling. He's making a covenant. We're talking about that covenant. He's making a covenant with his spiritual father. He says, so they came to Jericho. There he go. Verse number five. Let's look at verse number five. Look at verse number five. So now the sons of the prophets were where at Jericho came to Elijah and said to him, do you know that the Lord will take away your master from you today? So he answered, yes, I know, but shut up. Let me bless you with this. Every round that you go higher in God, you will have another level of critics attached to you. Let me say that again. Every round that you go higher, you will always have another level of critics attached to you. Remember the critics were at Gilgal. The critic was at Bethel. Now the critics are at Jericho, right? So, so, so. But Elijah understood, I'm going to stay focused. Look at verse number six and I'm wrapping this up. Then Elijah said to him, stay here. What is Elijah really doing? Can I tell you what Elijah's doing? Elijah is really testing his servitude. Elijah is really testing his submission. Elijah is really testing his obedience. Elijah is really testing his sonship. That's what he's really doing. See, it's okay to, to have my back when I ain't chastising you. It's okay to say you, you're going to be loyal to me when I ain't popping you. But the moment I stop popping you, now your season is all of a sudden up. So look what he says. But Elijah said, I'm going to stay focused because I ain't moving because I know what God promised me. And I ain't moving to the left. I ain't moving to the right. I'm going to stay focused. And he said, as the Lord lives, 
and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. And 50 men of the sons of the prophet went and stood facing them at a distance. Let me bless about eight of you all right around here. Let me bless about eight of you all. Let me show you what's getting ready to happen. So 50, people, 50 prophets <laughs> stood afar while Elijah and his spiritual father went afar off. What is God really conveying? God is saying, I'm about to bless you so good. I'm about to bless you so good that the people that don't want to see you prosper, they're going to see you prosper, but they can't even come close to you. <laughs> they're going to see the hand of God on your life and going to have a flashback and say, man, I wish I would have stayed in my proper place. And because, remember this, they wasn't anointed to walk with you, but God going to allow them to see you prospering. Y'all ain't ready. I'm done. Y'all ain't ready. This is too much for y'all. This is too much. This is this too much. This is too much. Y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready for this. I'm done. I, I, I'm going to stop. I'm, I'm going I'm to stop. If I get about eight people to tell me to keep going, I keep going. But I think this mess is a little too deep for y'all. If I get eight people to tell me to keep going, I'm going to keep going. If I get eight people to say, keep going, Pastor T, I'm going to keep going. But if I don't, I'll finish this tomorrow or Saturday. If I get eight people to tell me to keep going, I'm going to keep going. But if not, I'll finish this at a later time. Let me if I get eight people to tell me to keep going, I keep going. If not, I'll finish this another time. Got three more seconds. If not, if I don't get two people to tell me to keep going, I'm going I'm, I'm to stop. So I'm asking God, why did Elijah follow Elijah everywhere he went? And he said, Terrence, Elijah the student showed, showed his spiritual father, I am hungry and I'm ready to eat at whatever cost it may cost me. And when you're ready to follow Christ, let me speak to those of y'all that's been in a place called topsy-turvy and they haven't been feeling good in this last season, y'all. When you're ready to follow Christ, you don't care about the time. <laughs> you don't care about the distance. You don't care what others have to say. And because you are at your assigned place, you're not even going to let anyone talk you away or pull you away from your assigned place. Say to spirit of the living God, how hungry are you for the anointing? What distance will you go to get to your next place in God? Will you disregard and disobey God? Or will you be like Abraham and say, here am I. Say to spirit of the living God, your decision will set you on a course that will either result in abundance or darkness. And this is what eight people says, God, you have a call on your life. And the gifts that I place inside of you, says God, is to enable the fulfillment of this call have been assigned to you. Says the Spirit of the living God. He says, I'm going to cause, even in this hour and this season, I'm getting ready to cause things to metamorphically to start changing. And when, I, when these things start changing, God says, don't become cocky, don't become arrogant, but remain humble, says God. Always operate in a place called honor, says God. Always be in a place called accountability, says God. All right? I wanted to release that right around there. Let me show you all something. I want to go back to Gilgal and all of those other things, right? Now, the first place that God says, I'm going to challenge us. The first place, the first place when God challenges you is when he's about to take you to the next level. He's going to challenge your faith. I'm going to say that again. To know that when you get ready to go to the next level, the first thing that God challenges is your faith. See, many of us, we can talk faith, but faith without works is dead. Like Abraham, God tells Abraham, 
I'm going to release a prophetic utterance over your life, but I'm not going to do all of the work. Abraham, he said, Abraham, I told you I'm going to bless you, but it's going to take your obedience and your faith first. So God says, after God releases a word to Abraham, a prophetic word that I'm going to bless you, look at what God chronologically or prophetically he does. He says, now I want you to take your only legitimate son, Isaac, to Mount Moriah. And I want you to go kill him. That takes faith. Now the average person said, God, God ain't saying that. But God says, I'm telling you, I want you to take the very thing that you love the most and I want you to offer it up to a place called sacrifice. Let me bless about eight people right around here. When you are faced with a decision, don't contemplate or second guess what God wants you to do. Step out on the realms of faith and believe God. Let me tell you what faith does. Let me tell you what faith does. Faith causes miracles. Come on, eight people, please. Type that in. Faith causes miracles. Come on. Eight people, I need you to type that in. Faith causes miracles. Come on, eight people, hurry up, y'all. Hurry up, hurry up. We ain't got all day. What is really faith? What is really faith? I want y'all to type this down. What is really faith? I'm going to tell you what faith really is. Faith is, I need someone to type this in. I'm going to say it real slow for y'all can hear what I'm, what I'm conveying. Faith is a magnet force that brings miracles to you. <laughs> Did y'all hear me in that room? Y'all didn't hear me because y'all should have been shouting. Faith is a magnet force that brings miracles to you. In other words, you don't even qualify for the miracle. Your credit ain't good enough for the miracle. You should have died of COVID. But because you had unshakable faith and because you had undeniable faith, God says, I'm bringing the miracle on a platter. God says, I'm bringing the miracle in your bedroom. I'm bringing a miracle in your bank account. I'm bringing a miracle. I got him out of I'm bringing a miracle in your body, says God. He says, faith is a magnet force that brings miracles to you. All right. All right, this is too much for y'all. This is too much. I'm done. This is too much. This is too much for y'all. I'm done. 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 Faith is a magnet force that brings your miracles on a platter to you. So you mean to tell me? Some things I don't even qualify for, but because I got faith, it's being hand delivered to me. But you have to step into the realm of faith when you see faith moving, and you have to move with faith. God says, I'm waiting for you to obey my voice at the turning point at Gilgal. Let me bless about five people right here. Let me bless about five givers right around here. Five givers, let me bless you right here. And I'm not talking about money. I want to bless five givers right around here. Many times, your miracle comes when you're helping someone else. Many times, when you have a servant's mentality, God says because you are a servant and you're blessing others, it's going to be dual. Which means that because you have a servant to heart, a servant's heart, he said many times when you're praying, ah, this is for eight people. He says many times when you're praying for somebody else, your prayers are also being heard at the same time. When you're helping someone else, God says, I'm going to help you. So, 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 so he said, Gilgal. Now he's at Bethel. He said, Bethel. And Bethel is where Elijah understood or understands the tenacity. The second place. This is the second place. Bethel is the second place. Elijah taught Elijah was at Bethel, which means the house of God or the house of bread. This is where Elijah, come on y'all, I'm getting ready to tell you how you graduate. The first place was at your turning point. So God was turning some things out in your life. Many of y'all have graduated. Many of y'all at the place of Bethel. 
So this is where, because you're asking God, you're hungry, and you're thirsty for more of God, now God says you're at Bethel now. You're at this place in life. You're at this place at Bethel, which means, watch this now, now you're about to get revelation. You're no longer drinking milk. Now you're about to eat the meat of God's word. Now you're about to eat real good. Because now God says, you're at the turning point. Now I can trust you for more. I can trust you with greater. So it's at Bethel. It's at this place at Bethel. It's where Elijah is about to, oh my God, I need y'all to hear what I'm getting ready to say. I need y'all to hear this. Now. I'm trying to keep my composure because I really feel like running right around here. It's at this place of Bethel. It's where Elijah, the son, is about to access the glory. <laughs> it's at the place of Bethel. It's where Elijah, the son, is about to access the glory of God. And this is the place that many of y'all are at right now. And there's a place called tenacity. And it's at this place is where you're going to feel the weightiness of God. So in other words, you're saying, God, I'm tired of drinking milk. I want to experience the tangibilities of your presence. Is that the, this place of tenacity is where you're going to literally hear the voice of God crying out in the wilderness. <laughs> Elijah understood. <laughs> oh, my Surya and another man say. He understood. Oh, God. Elijah understood this, y'all. He understood. It's at this place. Is where he has to get a greater press. Because if he don't press harder at this place of Bethel, the enemy was going to gain on him like never before. And God says, I need to get you at Bethel. Because when you get at the place of Bethel, that means that the enemy can see you, but he can't touch you. It's at Bethel where the enemy can see you, but he can't touch you. And this is what God is saying about five of you all right around here. He said, I'm causing you to create an altar because it's at this place of tenacity. It's where you have to press harder even when you don't feel like pressing. It's at this place called tenacity is where you have to drown out the noise of those that don't want, to, that don't want what you want. It's at this place called tenacity is where you have to literally fight for your spiritual sanity. So here it is, you have Elijah who had to learn how to be persistent and determined regardless of what the naysayers had to say. And to know, let me bless about eight people right around here, and to know that you are in the right direction, you're going to have people coming out the woodworks trying to discourage you, trying to get you to backslide, trying to get you to return back to your vomit, trying to get you to go back to the nightclub, trying to get you to go back to that oh no good man, trying to get you to go back to that no good woman, that's when you know that you're at a place called next level because the, the attacks has intensified. I need about eight people. Please just type in, I have to get to Bethel. Eight people just type in, I have to get to Bethel. Hey, man, so ru kande man ro. Hey, man, I man say. God has placed friends in your life. They see the oil of God on your life, but they want you to. They want you to abort your destiny. But I prophesy now that you're gonna be like a goat with hinds feet. That you're gonna operate in a place called focus. That everything, every distraction, distraction that's in your life, I prophesy now be thou removed now. Be thy removed now. I don't care if they're your BFF. I don't care how long you know them. I don't care how many secrets they know of you. I hear God say, I'm getting ready to give you the strength to walk away. And when you walk away, you're going to walk away not looking back like Lot's wife. Oh, All right. All right. This is too much for y'all. Y'all ain't ready for this message, y'all. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. Because y'all typing too slow. I don't see no thumbs. I don't see no hearts. Oh, man. Look at this, Pastor Brenna. See, it's at Bethel. 
is where your assigned leaders, I want to bless y'all with this, is that this place of Bethel is where your assigned leaders must have access to your life. When you're ready to go to the next level, you, are, you don't care what your leaders know about you. All you know is that, man, I need them to cover me. I, I ain't got time to operate in a place called distance no more. I ain't got time to operate in a place called I'm shy. I ain't got time to operate in a place that's just not me. No, no. When you know that your leaders got something that you that they that they got that's what you need, you saying, I'm going to get on your nerve. I'm going to call you at 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't care. I'm going to be at your doorstep. I don't care what it takes. I know that what to get to my next, I got to get it from you. And so this is what Elijah the son understood this. He says, well, your assigned leaders, he says, I want you to have full access to me because you're, you're vulnerable spiritually. And when you're vulnerable spiritually, it's easy for the enemy to show you things that will override what the spirit of God is showing you. Let me say that again. When you're the place called spiritual vulnerability, it's easy for the enemy to show you things that will override what the Spirit of God is showing you. And this is why you have to have a greater level of honor. Come on. I need y'all to hear what I'm getting ready to convey. Come on. Veronica, let me say this to you. That's why you have to have a greater level of honor for those that God has sent in your life that will pour into you. Because there's nothing worse when you got a leader that has the unlocking in their mouth, but because of your, your nasty ways and your cantankerous ways, they shut up. And the worst thing that you could ever happen to you is to shut up the mouth of a prophet. And I know I hear some of you religious folks say, well, I get God for myself. Man, how that, how that works? You've been, you've been going after God all this time and they haven't worked? God said, you lack honor. You disrespectful. You gossiping. Get back to a place of honor. And so Elijah the son understood, I have to honor those that have authority over me. So the average person, come on, let me bless y'all real good. I got to close this, y'all. The average person will look at you as a flunky. The average person will look at you as a foot soldier. Then God showed me something, Ellen Ladon. He showed me something that was so powerful. He showed me something, Pastor Brenner, that was so powerful. He showed me something, I read that was so powerful. He showed me something that was so powerful, Tasha, and this is what it was. Come on, y'all. I need to get up for this one, y'all. I, I got to get up for this one. This chair is holding me hostage. God showed me something, Pastor Brenner. This is what he showed me. He says, <laughs> hey, I'm preaching myself happy tonight, y'all. He says, the God showed me something that was so powerful, and that was, he says, Terrence, do you know how many people want to be in a disciple's position? Even though Jesus anointed, appointed 70 disciples, Jesus created 70 disciples, even they even them even wished they had a greater access to Jesus like the 12. And this is what you and I have to understand. I got to conclude with this. We have to conclude with this. We have to understand, and that is... When God is elevating you, you have to be careful of those that are spewing venom to you about your leaders or leaders, period. Stay away from people that want to know the skinny of all pastors, that want to share pastors' dirt. What you have to learn to do, and that is, you got to say, I'm going to anoint my garment. I'm going to gird up my loins with truth. I'm going to put on the helmet of salvation because I understand what Paul said. Such were some of you. Some of you were liars. Some of you were backbiters. Some of you were gossipers. But God. <laughs> but God. So, 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 so. Then what he said? He said, you, he said, he says, because the very ones who wish they were in your shoes. Let me bless about eight of you all. The very ones, they wish they were in your shoes. But because they don't understand the oil that's on your life, they'll never know the price of your oil. They see where you are, but they don't know all you had to do just to get where you are. And that's where Elijah is right now. Come on, let me, let me help you with this. That's where Elijah is right now. He has a spiritual leader 
in Elijah and he's in sync with his vision. And those that are around him, they don't understand why he's being faithful to his spiritual father who's about to die. And this is what they don't understand. And that is Elijah, the spiritual father, gift is about to unlock heavenly realms and the supernatural gift that's inside of Elisha. <laughs> this preacher, you know what? I'm going to preach it at the potter house. Y'all don't appreciate this message. I'm going to go to Jake's church. I'm going to preach it at, at, at the potter's house. Y'all don't, y I, I, I'm going to preach it that heals someone. Y'all, 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 y'all ain't ready for this message. Y'all, y'all, y'all not, y'all not ready. Because y'all, y'all look at it, y'all acting real slow tonight. And this is what I hear God saying in my conclusion. I didn't close about 10 times, y'all. This is what I hear God saying. Keep serving your leaders regardless of the noise of the outsiders. But watch this now. This is the key. You have to do it unto God. I'm going to say this again. Don't just serve your leaders, but you got to serve them unto God. What did Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 18 says? I'm for real. I got the codes for real, y'all. Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 18. It says this. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward you openly. Look at verse number 2. Going back to 2 Kings chapter number 2. Elijah and Elijah... They went to Bethel, which is the house of God, the place of vision, the place of bread. The house of God is where you're taught the word of God. The Bible tells us that the value of going to church is found in Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 25. It says, forsake not the assemblings together in the house of God, right? Even though we're not worshiping in the building, but we shouldn't forsake ourselves from growing spiritually and investing in our spiritual walk. We need our faith to be encouraged In my conclusion We need our spirits to be encouraged And the house of God is where it happens I know right now Many of y'all you fascinated by YouTube, television, church But God says you need a covering God says you need a covering There are about three people right now That are watching me right now Three people right now are watching me right now You have no covering you're operating like a nomadic individual. What is a nomadic individual? You have no covering. The first thing when a police officer pull you over, they ask you, I need your license and I need your registration. Right now, three people right now, you need a pastor. You need someone to cover you. You need someone to watch over your soul right now. You need that right now. Somebody right now, you need to surrender your life to Christ. You need to surrender your life to Christ right now. If that's you right now, if that's you right now, come on. If that's you right now, just type in the comment section, I want to surrender my life to Christ right now. Come on, come on, come on. That's you right now. That's you right now. Just type in, I'm ready to surrender my life to Christ. Come on. If that's you, just type in, I'm ready to surrender my life to Christ right now. Come on. And then there's somebody that said, I'm already saved. I want to be a part of this ministry. Come on. That's you right now. Come on. Two people are watching me. One you need to surrender your life to Christ. And two, the other person, you need to give your life to Christ right now. Come on. That's you. Come on. Come on. That's you. Come on. Come on. We got time. We got time. Come on. What you waiting for? What you waiting for? Come on. Come on. Do not. It's a terrible thing to live in hell and then die and go to hell. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's you right now. You need to surrender your life to Christ. Come on. You need a covering. You need someone to watch over your soul. What you waiting for? What you waiting for? Come on, what you waiting for? Just type in the comment section, Pastor T, I want to surrender my life to Christ. Or you say, Pastor T, I'm already saved. I want to be a part of this ministry. Hurry up. We ain't got all day. I got me some Italian fiesta piece. I need to eat. Hurry up. Come on. She said she want to surrender her life to Christ. Come on, yeah. Tamara Libra. She want to surrender her life to Christ. Come on. Somebody's going to contact you. Someone's going to contact you. Come on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Come on. Somebody go after her. 
Come on. There are two more people you need to surrender your life to Christ. Come on. Yeah. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Yeah. Come on, two more people. You need to do this thing right now. Come on. Two more people, come on. Don't wait for you get to the church. The church doors may not open. Do it now. He said, the day you hear my voice, hard not your heart. We know punks in the spirit. Hurry up. There's somebody, you in a dead and religious church. You ain't heard from God. You ain't felt the move of God. God is saying, this is your day of turnaround. This is your place. This is your next place. Come on, that's you. Come on. You ain't felt God. God said, this is confirmation that this is where you need to be. Don't wait till we get to Soldier Field. Come on now. Come on. right now I feel strong I really feel God on this thing right here y'all I feel God on this thing and again anybody know that I, I don't I don't release things if it ain't God what we've been experiencing in our ministry the last man during this whole pandemic but especially um, this last month or so real strong I had daughters and sons been sowing one of them sold, and the next day, they got a $100,000 scholarship, a four-year scholarship, to one of the top colleges here in Chicago. Not only that, my personal testimony, because we sold, because we sold, look at this, get them, because we sold, look at this. The next day, we get a call. Someone zeroed out all of our bills. Zeroed them out. Completely out. Zeroed them out the next day. And left us with some cushion. A couple of thousand dollar cushion. Look at this. Watch that. I want to bless you. Earlier this week, that same person called us and told us, check our text message. That same person. So check your text message. We check our text message. Asked us, are y'all sitting down? We said, yeah, we sitting down. That same person gave us another $5,000. You know what we did? We said, apply to our mortgage. We don't want to see it. Apply to the mortgage. Y'all heard the testimony of my sister. Y'all heard y'all been hearing testimonies. Let me tell y'all what I hear God saying today. God said, the seed, hear this, I need y'all to hear what I'm getting ready to convey. Because if you think this is about money, log off. This is about unlocking your destiny. This is about unlocking your destiny. God said, the seed that you sow today, some of the debts that you have in 2020 will not go into 2021. I hear God saying, the seed that you sow today, this is good ground. This is fertile ground. We always see miracles, signs, and wonders because of this. We always. I hear God saying, the seed that you sow today is going to unlock it. My sister just said it. 
I, I, I shared your testimony earlier. Said, I don't know if you were there. I'm telling you all, the seed that you sow, God's going to give you scholarships. He's going to wipe out debt. He's going to cause millionaires to bless you. He's going to cause things to happen that ain't never happened before. I'm telling you, there are about three people. that You need to sow at least $200. Three people right now, you need to sow $200. Then there's somebody that can sow even more than that. But I'm telling you right now, thank you. I'm telling you right now. The seed that you sow, God said, I'm getting ready to cancel debts because of this seed. You already got the money already to pay that bill. But I hear God saying, I'm getting ready to cancel that debt. I'm talking about sowing on this. I'm talking about sowing right now. All the information is at the bottom of the screen. Zell it, cash app it right now. I, again, I will never, ever, ever, ever put God's name on something and it's not God. I will not do it. I hear God saying, this seed is getting ready to call, it's getting ready to cause a crossover. Things that you, things that was, things that was in 2020 will not go into 2021 because of the seed that you're sowing. God said, I'm getting ready to cancel debt right now. Tracy Cofield, God said, this seed that you're sowing, I'm getting ready to cancel debt right now. Amen. You better receive that. Not only do you receive it, but I hear God saying, sow it. Seal it. The seed is going to seal it. I'm telling you what God said. If you enjoyed this message, come on, I need you to sow. Don't, do not allow the spirit of fear. Do not allow the spirit of fear to cause you not to sow. You'll miss out on your date with destiny if you operate in a place called fear. I dare you to sow. Amen? This Pastor T, y'all. If you enjoyed this message, just type it. I enjoyed this message, Pastor T. Come on. Come on, if you enjoyed this message, just type it. I enjoyed this message, Pastor T. Right? This seed is getting ready to do what? It's getting ready to do what? He's releasing what? I dare you to sow. Come on. Yeah. Jeff, what's going on, baby? Super proud of you, man. Come on, I need you to sow. Let's do it. I dare you to sow right now. I'm God's man. I won't lie on God. I won't put God's name on him. It's not God. I'm telling you, this is one of those messages you got to rewatch it because there was so much meat on him. God says, I'm releasing miracles. All of our first time visitors, welcome to our, to our live. We thank you. We're excited that you were blessed by the word, that you were empowered. We look forward to seeing more of you tomorrow. We're going to have a great time tomorrow. Tomorrow we have our virtual Virtual uh, uh, New Year's Eve is plaids and, and prints is the theme. We're doing virtual. We're doing it virtually. So again, all the information is on my page. I'm telling you, we're going to have fun. We got Jeremiah, who's the comedian. Man, he's going to rock that place. We got a world-renowned DJ Nick, DJ Nonstop. He's going to DJ. The party starts tomorrow at 9 o'clock. We're going to have a phenomenal time. I'm telling you. You want to be a part of our New Year's Eve celebration tomorrow, y'all. It's going to be so much fun. Don't get drunk. I'm telling you, don't get drunk. Don't 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 sex the night away. Don't do that. Let's have a good time. Amen? All right. This Pastor T, y'all. We thank God for you. We're going to see y'all tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Oh, no. We, we're doing it virtually, so I won't be here tomorrow. So, again, the person, I think it was Tamara, liberal, Someone's going to contact you. And again, for those of you all that are your first time here, we thank you for coming, for being a part. Sundays at 2 o'clock. As a matter of fact, this coming Sunday, we're going to have communion. The first Sunday of the year, we're going to have communion. All right? This Pastor T, y'all. I'm out of here, y'all. I poured out. I'm tired. Pray for me. Cover me in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Somebody walk to Mary through the prayer of salvation. Hurry up. Y'all, let's do that. Let's welcome to the prayer. Let's offer the prayer of salvation. Let's do that right now. Let's get it connected. It's Pastor T, y'all. Be blessed.